Hey everybody, welcome back to Lessons Learned, the podcast where we aim to turn our experiences into your wisdom. I'm Randy, here today with Chris, Jared, Joe, and Talon, and today we're going to be talking about the holidays being it's that time of year again. Chris, why don't you take us in? Merry Chrysler. Chris here. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? So yeah, we're going to be talking about some experiences we've had and how to deal with you know being alone this year, as many people will be for the first time maybe ever and not being with family due to COVID reasons. But uh, we all have experience being alone and away from family, and we all have some very fond memories growing up. So we're just going to be talking about that and talking about how to stay happy no matter what it is you're doing during the holiday season. Yeah. So Talon, why don't you take it away, buddy? Uh, so I think the best way, especially if you've never been alone for Christmas or any holiday, uh, is try and just make it as normal as possible. So honestly just decorate around your house like if, if you never have christmas at your house or like maybe you never decorate or anything decorate around your house and just like whatever you normally do with your family just do it with yourself just keep traditions alive and i think that'll just make you a lot happier and of course reach out to your family members give them like even just something like a call um maybe facetime them or something like that that way even if you're not in the same house or in the same room with them you can still say merry christmas you can still feel like you're around them and definitely still do like stuff like gifts i mean you can just get stuff delivered so it's not a very difficult thing to do to still give gifts to people and everything but i think just trying to keep the holidays normal as much as possible is the best thing you can do Mm -hmm. yeah i really like that just keeping it normal and also yeah video chatting calling family that's a big thing yeah so one thing i mentioned before we started recording was that uh so what we're going to do this year and not just with you guys, but some other friends of mine, we're going to do this virtual Christmas is my idea is so we're going to mail each other gifts, you know, up until before Christmas and then just leave them under the tree until Christmas day. Right. And then FaceTime everybody. And then you open up gifts together virtually. It's my virtual Christmas idea. I trademarked. I like that a lot. (laughs) Yeah. That's pretty dope, man. So yeah, it's going to be fun, man. So even though I can't be with anybody, we're still going to have fun. So, Mm-hmm. Right. And it's still just as personal because you're sending your friends gifts and you know what each other likes, and then you'll get to see their reactions. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's Heck pretty yeah. neat. I mean, I, I like think that can too. apply, you know, even without all the COVID stuff going on. Like, because, you know, for instance, Chris, you guys are far away from me, and even like Joe is far away from me. So if we wanted to say spend Christmas together, I think that's a great way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then I could just hang up on you whenever I feel like it. <laughs> yeah, when I get too annoying, right? <laughs> this is true. No, so I think uh, I think it's going to be a weird year for everybody, especially those who haven't done this before. And Joe, I don't know about you because you've kind of been home for a while, but have you ever spent Christmas alone? Um, No, not Christmas. Uh, I did spend Thanksgiving alone um, back when I was in tech school for the Air Force. Um which that was kind of boring, but Christmas I have fortunately been able to spend with my family uh, every time. Um, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. The good part about me being back in Dover, actually, is that I have the family here, and my friends in the Air Force who don't have or are not able to go home, I like to invite them over so they can actually spend Christmas or Thanksgiving, whatever holiday, with a, like with my family. You know, we actually get to cook them, you know, actual um, holiday meals and everything like that so you know they get the sense of being back home even when they're not able to actually go back to see their own family that's awesome yeah. i mean that means a lot i know when i was in tech school my roommate his uh his uncle uh lived in like the same town because it was in san antonio he lived in san antonio right and he's like you want to come over for thanksgiving it was like thanksgiving at a friend's like at, a, at a, like a fan like his family's house or like thanksgiving at the defect like of course i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah. and they packed me up like they packed me up like food like leftovers and everything i was like it was like the greatest time of tech school oh hell yeah so it, was, it was so great yeah <laughs> just having better brother, food <laughs> i remember uh my first year here in omaha i was friends with tyler venata i don't know if he listens to this or not but he should because shout he's out one of my best friends if he doesn't he's kind of a douche but Thanks. uh yeah so he invited me over he had some family friend up here as well and they're from Tennessee, so like I had a southern style Thanksgiving, and oh my god, was it good! Nice, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. all that food. It was nice, nice. Man, yeah, I think that's up. the one thing that the uh, military does teach people is that you know everyone's separated from their family, so it brings everyone who's forced to be together to kind of be more um, fr- 
more friendly, more, you know, welcoming into homes and everything. So I think that's one thing that, you know, the people who are not military are able to kind of like learn from us, I guess. Um, it's that, you know, when you're not able to actually go see family, you know, reach out to those who can't go home. You know, if you're in a situation where you're not able to see certain family members, if you're seeing someone like friends or whatever that are not able to go home, like invite them into your house. If you see them on a regular basis and you're not worried about, you know, COVID or anything like that, then, you know, invite them, be friendly and, you know, uh, help them out, get through the holiday season. Heck yeah, Joe. Um, I can actually kind of talk to that a little bit. So my brother, as a lot of you guys know, a couple of years ago moved, they, they lived around like 20 minutes from us and they ended up moving to Indiana to be closer to his wife's family. And, um, when, uh, when that happened, we kind of like, we, we always did Thanksgiving with them. So once that happened, we really didn't celebrate Thanksgiving anymore. So Kyle, when he still lived here, which he does not anymore, he's in Colorado, uh, his family started inviting me over for Thanksgiving, which was really nice. Cause that way I was actually able to like go out and do something and spend time with people rather than just sit at home. And, uh, I mean, now I don't know if that's going to be the deal with COVID this year with them. I don't know how comfortable they are with having people over and whatnot, but yeah, I think that's a a really great way. I was kind of on the other end of it where somebody was able to invite me into their home, but like, it definitely makes a difference and it's definitely really nice to have. Right. It definitely helps people get through the the season a lot happier to be comfortable with other people. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to tell a story last year of mine and Talon's Christmas. Oh I man. Christmas with you. It was very close. It was very Christmas close. Christmas season. I, I was expecting you to say, like, talk about Thanksgiving or, like, our birthdays. Because we, we were both gone for Thanksgiving. We were both gone for our birthdays last year. So. Yeah. I flew on both Thanksgiving and Christmas last year. And oh. New Year's. And the Super Bowl. And on your Jeez. birthday, didn't you? Yeah, my birthday. Yeah, because you <laughs> got the, the because you got the Jello with the... F's in with the, the chat pre- Was it Chris. pre-workout? What was yeah, in there? Yeah, he gave me a bowl of Jello. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it, was with, it was like it was with B- BCAAs, right? Yeah, what? it was BCAA yeah. Jello yeah. Nice. with two <laughs> candles on it. It was, it, was, it was a good snack for the flight. Yeah. If it makes um, you feel any better, I was also working on the flight line during those every single one of those holidays as well. <laughs> you hate to see it. At least you were home. Yeah. True, but go on. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, here we are in Japan and, uh, all alone, you know, at least Talon's my friend. So, you know, we made the best of it. I obviously didn't want to be there during Christmas. I love snow. I love the cold weather. I love the camaraderie of like back home and all your friends are there and, you know, family's there gifts, you know, no one sent me gifts cause I was, I didn't have a fucking address, but you know, um, yeah, it was fun. We went downtown and in the city and they decorate so much it's not cold it was still like 60 degrees out but (laughs) it was awesome like they have this staircase with uh it almost looks like a cinderella castle like on on the on the front face of every stair so not the top where you actually step but the other part oh yeah 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 there's like a design so when you up close it doesn't look like anything but when you step back the staircase doesn't look like a staircase it's just like one big castle it looks awesome yeah it's so cool yeah, and they decorate the mall like so much. So it was really cool to see a different country's Christmas. Yeah. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they like the Pokemon store was in uh in that mall. So like there was like Pikachu's with like Santa hats and everything. Oh, it was yeah, adorable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They dec- they decorate really good. Yeah, yeah and s- so the point I'm trying to get is here is like if you're not where you want to be, try and make the best of it. Like we were talking about. So try and get out and make it normal. Like pretend you were back in the states or pretend you're back home like go go do something that you would normally do and get the enjoyment out of it maybe if it's not how you normally do it like if it's by yourself or with maybe there's someone you've been meaning to reach out to and you just haven't and you haven't connected with them for a while invite them out and go do something yeah and so Talon, i like what you were saying about decorate like if you're away from home still like decorate and put christmas decorations up and everything because one year i think it was 2016 i was in japan for christmas And I bought this Charlie Brown Christmas tree (laughs) and I put it in my hotel room in there and all the, the presents that my family sent me, I put it under that little tree. (laughs) Some of the presents were bigger than the tree. That's awesome. But yeah, so I just, I kept those under there and, you know, just 
watched some Christmas movies with the crew and put Christmas music on. And then I waited until Christmas morning to open those up. And then I called family and FaceTimed them. And it made it so much better. Dude, so you're a nice. pioneer of the virtual Christmas. Nice. Yeah. Hey, yo. You should have patented it before Chris. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's been <laughs> going on it. way oh, yeah. long. Uh, yeah, <clears> to be fair, idea. I've seen it. like. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Uh, I saw it like eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's- another... Another really cool experience that I had with Christmas away from home, I was actually in England. And a lot like Japan, England puts up a lot of really cool Christmas decorations like in the city of London and stuff like that. Ooh. So we were staying in this flat in London, basically our whole crew. You think you're you think you're oh funny <laughs> saying flat, huh? You think you're cool? It's flat. That's what it is. I know, but you think you're cool, huh? You're yeah, sophisticated enough and cultured. <clears throat> what else would you yeah. call it? An apartment. <laughs> So we, okay, we all stayed in this (laughs) flat, Chris, and uh, it was like, I think 12 of us staying here, and we woke up Christmas morning, and I woke up a little early and went for a jog down to the river, and just, I didn't know where I was going, I was just, I just went in one direction and tried to find my way back, it was really cool, just just seeing all the decorations (laughs) and everything, and then once I got back, all of us decided to go out to different stores and get like a food, a traditional food that our family makes for Christmas or Thanksgiving or something, and then come back to the flat. Um, flat. Around. <laughs> I didn't say it. I the, didn't say it. Come back to the apartment. I don't care what you want to call it, man. <laughs> but yeah, we'd come back around noon and we would all start preparing these foods. And we all had these different foods put together and had Christmas lunch together. And at it was the so flat. Cool. Yeah, at the flat. <laughs> at the flat. That was awesome though, because that's the point we're trying to make is you know, you might not be friends with everybody on that crew. You're definitely not best friends with probably. It was a really good crew, crew, dude. Okay. It was yeah, a really right, that crew was dope. Yeah. But anyway, for people listening, is like if you could just get a bunch of friends together, maybe someone lives in the same apartment as you that you, you're friendly with or you know, <laughs> the same flat, I mean. Um, but yeah, so if you <laughs> just reach out to somebody and like get together, like maybe people you don't even really know that well, and maybe it's a chance for you to to connect with them and see what they're all about. So mm-hmm. I think that's important. Uh, I don't really want to talk about the military too much in, in this episode, but that is one thing that they teach us very well, as Joey said. Um, is yeah. like it's very family oriented, so it, they're very good at you know trying to make everyone feel like a family. I yeah. think it's still a concept that's applicable to the civilian world, though, like, for sure. It is. I think Joe said in the past, or someone said in the past, but every, it's the military, is, everyone's pretty much embracing the suck together. So, like, we're, we all have that same mindset. So, it's like, oh, might as well make it, make the most out of it, though. Because it's like, if everyone, like, if everyone in the military can't go home for Christmas or something like that, it's like, you're all in the same, like, you're all in the same boat, might as well make the most of it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's one thing that it teaches you really well. So, what is everyone's like best Christmas memory that they have? Jared, let's start with you. Okay, best Christmas memory. Um, so my brothers and sisters and I, we would all go down the street and go to our neighbor's yard because they had a big hill, and we would just go sliding down that hill, man. And that was just like one of my most fondest memories of my childhood. Then also one Christmas we, uh, you know, we got smaller presents because like that year my parents, uh, I don't know they they didn't rent for the flat Christmas or something. (laughs) So (laughs) we all we all got smaller Christmas presents, which you know at first you know as a kid you're kind of in that selfish mindset and you're kind of like you're mad butt hurt. Yeah, pretty much. But we ended up getting these like really cool like not. They're kind of like the Beyblade design with like the zips and it has a wheel on it. So you attach this wheel onto this like zip line thing and then you just like rip it and let it go. And it didn't even snow that Christmas either. But we all went out to the street and we were like zipping these things down the road. And that was just like so much fun. Nice. Yeah. Something stupid and. And it was like a five dollar gift. Yeah, that's but it was fun. It's all <laughs> about how you implement it, you know. It entertained you, and that's all that mattered. Did Did you like go down like on the street and just be like, "Let it rip"? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I did all the cool <laughs> moves and it, stances. Yeah. You do like three parkour. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, but that that was. I think that was it for me. 
Joey, let's hear it from you because I I'd like to see what you remember because I'm obviously older than you, so I have a memory that you probably don't. But that, what's yours? That's facts. You know what's funny is I was really hoping that you would talk first to jog my memory. <laughs> but <that's, laughs> do you want me to? No, no, no. no. I'll, I'll see what I can remember. See if you jog anything later, though. Um, Joey can't remember what he had for I breakfast. Think... <laughs> Dude, yeah, my memory is my memory is pretty garbage. <laughs> but um, no. So I think one of the one of the big uh, Christmas memories I have is always you know waking up early and then coming out and seeing all the the loaded amount of christmas presents under the tree it kind of sucks as you get older watching how and many then those... realizing only a third of them are for you yes yeah, yeah. that part <laughs> that part sucks on top of the fact when <laughs> only you get child older, life <laughs> when you get older the um uh, the amount of presents go down but you know it is what it is but <laughs> i think my my one famous christmas story for me was when i was i don't know maybe like eight years old something like that my favorite video game was kingdom hearts and oh awesome. yeah yes so mm-hmm. I, Nerds. I i forget what right? had happened but i think the original kingdom hearts that i had broke or something maybe got scratched where it wasn't reading and i think we would have gone out with my parents multiple times to stores to find it couldn't find it anywhere and Christmas morning came around. I wake up, I open up a box, and it's a clothing box. You know, I had already opened up like three or four clothing boxes. I'm like, oh, this is whack. You know, I'm eight years old. I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> and so it's red and black. I remember the color. I open up the box, and of course, my parents would put Kingdom Hearts right in there, and I like started crying. I was so happy. Like, it was just a video game, but I loved it so much. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. There is a Santa. Like, I truly believe, like, Santa got it for me. I was crying. It was a great... <laughs> you were crying. Dude, it was a great time. My parents will never let me live it down. But you know what? It was a great game. I still love it. No doubt. <laughs> no bat. No bat, dude. Um, That's funny. I, yeah, that's what I got. What do you got, Chris? Um, I'm surprised you don't remember... You didn't mention what I do every single Christmas. Morning. Oh my gosh! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I forgot. Oh no, what is it? All right, you you can you can tell the story. <laughs> no, no, you tell it. It's funnier from a different perspective. Okay. <laughs> so what? I guess it's funnier going into Christmas Eve because that you started doing that as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. So me and it's nothing. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. But you know, me and Chris like to torture our parents a little bit. <laughs> so. Uh, Christmas Eve will roll around, and Chris has the dumb voice that he does, where he talks like yes, <laughs> and yes, <laughs> and so when Christmas Eve rolls around, it, like everyone's home, we're about to get ready to go to bed. My brother, and I, well, I would start following Chris. We would run into our parents' room and just start yelling, "It's Christmas Eve! It's Christmas Eve!" and start running up to our parents and just like punching them. <laughs> <laughs> the entire... I was talking like nonstop for like an hour, yeah. two hours maybe. It's Christmas Eve. Oh my god! Just and I uh, get dart guns and like start shooting. Like it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> just throw shit. It was so funny. Dude. And then you know we torture them. <laughs> we finish. We go to bed. Wake up in the morning. Do it again. It's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. <laughs> just, they're trying to sleep in their bedroom. We just oh break in, <laughs> screaming in there, throwing oh stuff at them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'll, ta- I'll I- take away all of your presents at that moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I love Christmas. So as a kid, like, I was very animated about it. And Joey doesn't remember. He's, he was Joey's always a person where, like he gets a gift. I'm like, yeah, I'll open it later. I'm like, no, I'm opening it right now. That's awesome. Facts. Um, so obviously Christmas morning, Joey's still sleeping. I'm like hyper. I'm awake There's every Christmas. You're always still sleeping. I jump on your bed and start punching you in the face. It's Christmas day. It's Christmas day. <laughs> so you do this to everyone. Yeah. No one's safe. Right. And then you join along after you get pissed off. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> he will actually punch me in the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It was great. Maybe that's why you're so dumb. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. But all right. So my favorite Christmas memory uh, was definitely with grandma and grandpa uh, and the whole family back when we used to have like big family gatherings before everyone moved away. Uh, in their old house, they had the little porch area and they always had this really nice Christmas tree. They would, like me and grandma would always go cut it down. You never tagged along because you were still young. Uh, I think I tagged along one time, but yes. I, yeah, but we did it like every yeah, year. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, so we would go out to like the forest 
and go cut down our own tree and then bring it back. It was it was like a two hour ordeal. It was like the whole morning. And uh, so yeah, we'd always set it up. And then I remember Grandma just had these old decorations, and they're they're so cool. And I just remember decorating the tree with her and Grandpa, and it was awesome. And like just that porch, it was always colder out there. It was nice. It was just the whole. It felt like Christmas, like setting up that tree. It was colder. Uh, it, you know, it usually snowed back home like a lot every Christmas. So it was cool. Yep. And then one funny memory. I told us back home when we were talking about my grandpa. Uh, we went out. We had moved to Delaware. And we went out to, uh, to a Christmas tree farm out there. And he goes, hey, Chris, have you heard about the, the Indian tribe around here? The Where the Fuck Are We tribe? I said, no, <laughs> what is that? And he goes, yeah, they usually get to the top of this hill here. And he walks up the hill and he goes, they look around. And they go, where the fuck are we? <laughs> Dude, that shit was so funny. Like, that was awesome. Just little memories like yeah. that. I'll cherish forever. It was fun. Yep. <laughs> and do you remember what the uh, traditional about- Christmas present that we always get was from them? Oh, bag full of snacks, like big Texas cinnamon rolls. Oh, bag yeah. full. I'm talking like a giant, like shopping bag, like the plastic ones you bring to the stores nowadays. Dude, filled with candy. That's that awesome. Dude. I-, I was thinking more along yeah. the lines of the Hess trucks, but yes, those are. Uh, that. Oh yeah, the Hess trucks too. <laughs> yep. <But> yeah, <laughs> candy was they, better. They were awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was cool. How about Randall? Randizzle. All right. So, my memory that I have was from when I was really young. So I actually don't remember it, but my mom and dad always tell the story about it, but it's definitely one of my, my favorite Christmas stories from when I was a kid. So as a kid, I was really, really into trains, like love trains. Everything was trains. Like we would go up the train tracks are right up the street from my house. We would go up and like watch the train all the time. I like trains. So I like trains. So (laughs) (laughs) we, uh, we go to talk to Santa. I forget. I think it was at a restaurant, actually. And I sit on Santa's lap. And, you know, they go through the whole thing. What do you want for Christmas? So I asked him for a coal collection. <laughs> oh, now, what? now, as per Christmas tradition, bad kids are supposed to get coal. If you don't know this, if you don't know this, I don't know what's wrong with you. But hey, okay. <laughs> your own. don't know what to tell um, you. Yeah. So the. I can only imagine the look on this mall Santa's face <laughs> when I asked for coal for Christmas. This kid must suck. He's so, asking for coal. He knows he's a terrible kid. <laughs> right. So this guy's so confused. So I guess my mom kind of like whispered in his ear, like, oh, he's really into trains, blah, blah, blah. So Christmas Day comes around and I'm opening presents. And I open this one present is like so oddly shaped. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what is this? So I open it up and I guess my dad had taken a piece of wood and he glued a bunch of pieces of coal to it. And then that was my coal collection I got for Christmas. That is amazing. It's actually, that's funny, but that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it was a funny story. Like, you know, what kid asked for coal for Christmas? This one right here. (laughs) You know, I'm not even surprised. Like it makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. How about you, Talon? Uh, so surprisingly, I don't really have like many specific Christmas memories. Normally, like honestly, Christmas time, like it would just be me winter break. Like I would open up my presents around Christmas, and I'll just play video games for like two weeks straight. Like I, it would be my time Dude. to play like those RPGs, like Fallout Three or something like that at the time. Like I would just play Fuck it like yeah. all of winter break, and I'll be like a hundred percent in the game. Um, but like one specific memory. So it was like I don't know how old I was. But we had Christmas at my grandparents' house, um, which is in Sterling. So it's like two hours away from like Denver. So we drove up there. There ain't shit out there. No, it's a small, small town. But yeah. like my whole family's from there. Um, nice. Now I so we there. we opened up presents and everything there. And I don't remember why, but me and my sister we stayed the night, like, or we were gonna stay like a week there or something like that during Christmas break. Hmm. Um, but like that first night, like I was like, I talked to my grandparents. I'm like, I want to go home. <laughs> I was like, I, I miss my, I was, I miss my home. I miss my parents. I want to go home. And like, they're like, oh, but your parents are already back in Denver. And it's like, I won't go home right now. <laughs> and so like, they, they called my parents. And they're what like, they're, like, they're trying to like talk me down from it. But like, my parents finally gave in, and like, they drove the two hours just to come pick me up. 
and oh, man. I literally went back home and like I, I had all my Christmas presents with me and I like immediately <laughs> instead of going to bed or anything it was like 10 o'clock at night I'm just like I'm gonna go play my Christmas presents it was like you just want to go home and play like with your Christmas presents <laughs> yeah. you I, spoiled like looking shit. looking back now like yeah probably that's probably what it was like I probably just wanted to like I got a bunch of video games that year and at my grandparents house obviously I couldn't play any of them so I was like I want to play these right now oh, can yeah. you imagine how you made them feel my grandparents yes well, you dirtbag! <laughs> hey man, I, I got I got destroy all humans too, and like Le- I think it was like Lego Star Wars and stuff. So they I gave wanted- you all these like <laughs> violent video games, and they're like you're just asking to go home. A lot like, of oh, things shit. are starting to make sense now. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, those <laughs> are some great games. I can't blame them. Yeah, I, <laughs> maybe we should let them go. If I remember, if I remember right, uh, I think my parents were like, "No, you can't play those." Like they're like they t- I think they took them away for like a week. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> they they saw through me but like honestly like thinking back is like i don't remember maybe i actually just did just want to go home or like maybe it was just for the like my christmas gifts like i wanted to play with them or stuff i don't know like i don't remember like i was probably like 10 i don't remember what was going on through my head Interesting. okay but yeah. i'm gonna play devil's advocate here how awful was it because this is what i always remember was you would get up christmas morning you'd open all these awesome presents you're so pumped to play with them and then mom's like Get your shoes on. We're going to your grandparents' house. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. fuck. I just got all these awesome toys. I want to play with them. I don't oh, want to go to grandma's house and leave all my cool ass shit here. Yeah. That's it's fast. like I just opened them. I, I don't get to play with them first. Like, what the, what, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, right? Dude, I loved going to grandma's house. Like, that was better gifts there. <laughs> <laughs> we were about to get the bags I got a of bag- candy. Yeah, bag full of candy <laughs> waiting for me. Shit, let's go. You're the Jeez. kid that didn't like toys or anything. You just wanted food. That's all that you cared about. No, I had a lot of good toys. That's why he's I, fat just, I don't know. I loved hanging out with my grandparents because they were awesome. Yeah. You're fat. Chris was a big chungus. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't even <laughs> no, fat. He was no, not. Not. <laughs> no, he wasn't. No. <laughs> I just came across that picture of me and Chris from Pumpkin Chunkin' and I was like, wow, we both used to be skinny. Yeah. Wait, I still what? am skinny. Pumpkin? No, nah, you fat. Oh, he doesn't know oh, what pumpkin chunkin' is. Oh, shit. What did you just say? Pumpkin chunkin'. Pumpkin chunkin'. All right. What is that? <laughs> just Google it. We're not going to get into it because it's we're off topic. Yeah. We're just Google pumpkin chunkin', and that's where we were. How is it off topic? It's, it's pumpkins. It's, it's around the holiday times. It is. It's holidays. That is a holiday. I think, no, it, I think no, it's yeah, worth really. explaining. All right. So we'll get into it. I'll get into it real quick. Ready? Pumpkin chunking. Is Delaware's oh. finest, greatest thing, but it's all canceled now because the land lease got expired, whatever. Uh, they built these giant air cannons, and they'd come home from all over and the And catapults. Country, and catapults, like trebuchet catapults, and just launch pumpkins. Dude. And see who could get the world record of the That farthest. is so That's, cool. Yeah. It, it was awesome. It, <laughs> all right. And it sounds cool, right? And then it is the most Walmart of events you have ever been to. Oh, it's so is. Remember the lady, oh, that one lady, the picture? Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. God. Hold Take on, NASCAR, and Walmart, and Budweiser and put it all together. <laughs> you get pumpkin chunking. <laughs> <laughs> it was the trashiest thing I've ever been oh, to, but it was man. funny. I mean, it makes sense. Awesome. They're building air like air cannons and catapults to launch pumpkins. Who like who do you think the crowd's oh gonna God. be? <laughs> hey, the Fucking Mythbusters amazing. were there though, weren't they? One year? Yeah, oh. the Mythbusters did do an episode there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. What was the myth? You know, I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, okay. It was some physics things, probably. Probably. Um but yeah, back on topic. Yep. So, what are what are some things that you guys are doing this year to, I guess, deal with uh, the holidays and get through the holidays with uh, COVID? Yeah. yeah. Like for example, for me, um, I'm at the point where I have seven nieces and nephews, so yeah. I'm pretty much just trying to create moments for them. You know. Um, and getting them gifts and whatnot. And actually, I read a book. Here's my book plug for today. Hell yeah. Uh, it's it. called The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. Oh, I read that one. Well, yeah, you know, like one chapter of it. It's really good. You should read the it rest. It is good. I've just got like eight other books. Sorry, I cut you off. But uh, in the book, they go on to talk about, you know, moments of elevation, insight, pride, uh, and connection. And uh, like when I read that book, I realized, hey, I can actually create like lasting memories with my nieces and nephews. And that book was actually amazing. Um, So what I'm trying to do this year is I'm trying to make moments of elevation and moments of connection with my nieces and nephews. So I'm getting them all gifts and trying to like make gifts and everything. I'm trying to make more gifts than I'm buying just because it takes my time. 
it's more thoughtful yeah exactly yeah, it's a lot more sentimental um, and yeah i'm gonna I also have a send woodworking those to business, them shameless plug <laughs> you're woodworking shut just up <laughs> damn it Randy. just shut up i said shameless plug <laughs> merry christmas now shut your mouth jeez <laughs> uh, so i'm trying to um get them gifts and then also send a letter with each gift you know and then on thanksgiving or on christmas morning i'm gonna uh just video chat with them and spend time with them that way virtual christmas nice virtual christmas <laughs> shameless exactly. plug do you yes, normally, so that's what i'm doing do you do you ever like go home for christmas or like visit them like, oh yeah i do uh uh last year i spent christmas and new year's home um this year though i feel like not a lot of people are going to be able to go home and visit family yeah. like i don't think it's going to be the smart thing to do and uh yeah so that's not really going to be much of a possibility this year yeah but usually i do i make time to go home take awesome. leave right i think right. Uh, yeah that's cool i think um what was i gonna say uh yeah for me i guess i'll just jump right into myself you know be the selfish dude but um i like i'm excited for this christmas because you know of course i am fortunate enough to be home and i would rather because I, i'm able to see my family whenever i want i know all my military friends are not so i'm really excited to actually you know have the friends over that aren't able to go home and have them over to my house and actually like make it meaningful to them. Uh, it sounds a little bit corny, I know, but it's, I find it a lot more fun. You know, I'll, I'll spend the morning with my family, but then, you know, in the evening, afternoon, whatever it may be, um, I'll have my friends over to my place and might even do some gifts at my place, something like that. We'll see. I think that's honestly more fun. Like you have to do the family stuff, but having just friends over is I don't know. Yeah. I've always been bigger on friends than family. I agree. I, I agree as well. Yep. Because at some, at some point, you know, your friends feel more so like family, especially, I think that's especially more true in the military just because, you know, the whole embrace of suck. Everyone's away from their own family, so you embrace each other more. So it becomes a lot more fun. You get to do uh, a lot more, you know, adult-friendly party games, whatever it may be. Play some uh, Cards Against Humanity. Everyone just hang out and have a good time with each other. So I'm I'm excited for that one. No, I can agree with that. Like not to sound mean, but like going to see family on holidays to some degree, it's a little bit of a chore because, you know, like you have to do like it's like you want to be there for each other. But like you just you have to do it. I'm like with friends. It's like you're doing that for fun. Like you're doing that just to spend time with each other. Um, But yeah. Yeah, I'm so know, glad uh, you guys said it first because I was thinking it, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's a chore. See, I don't yeah. I've never had a bad experience with like family because I mean, it's usually just my parents and then my grandparents. That was it. But even then we went to my aunt and uncles, like I'm best friends with my cousin. Like the the dude's hilarious. (laughs) So like, I always had a good time no matter where I went. So yeah, I was always excited whether it was family or friends. Like I just had a blast. I maybe it's just cause I love Christmas, everything about it. Yeah. So. So for me as a kid, I always loved Christmas. Now, especially because i also have like i mean my parents are divorced and then like gabby's parents are divorced so like we have like five different houses to go to like if we wanted to see everyone for christmas and all of them expect you to go they're like are you gonna show up are you gonna show up for like lunch or dinner or something like that and so like we're just driving around town and so they're just like because you feel bad if you don't show up and it, it's it's honestly i hate it okay that's Not a chore lie. Yeah, I think me and joey have been blessed that our parents aren't divorced so <laughs> we don't have that which a lot of the country Yeesh is the opposite uh so yeah we've been kind of blessed in that aspect yeah that definitely yeah. have been because yeah see cause i just then, like then oops, you have sorry, four Chris. yeah no you're good because you know us it's two people it's my parents and my grandparents and then most of the time we would just do it all at once you guys is like four different sets of family you have to go see yeah screw that man yeah i mean you get <laughs> yeah. way more gifts so i mean there's a positive but screw that boom yeah no, i'm just trying to stay in one place and chill on christmas i'm not trying to like go from house to house to house that yeah i'm trying to load my eggnog with some vodka and just get toasted dude. That, <laughs> toast. yeah. that's what christmas is all about <laughs> <laughs> lessons learned christmas is about getting turned as a kid it's about the gifts as an adult it's just about how drunk can you get yes. yeah i wonder you know thinking back i wonder if our parents ever just we're just drinking, like sneaking swigs of like rumple mints in the back room or something. <laughs> rumple, rumple mints. Yeah. What the fuck's a rumple mint? <laughs> I don't. Dude, that shit's good. Yeah. 
I don't think they did, but that would be hilarious if they. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him next That's time good. I see him. Actually, I'm gonna go see him today, so I'll ask him. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna ask them. They're like, "Oh yeah, we don't even remember the last like ten Christmases." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we don't know how we got they home, don't, but we did. They don't remember any of the Christmases from when they were little because they were in there punching them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you gave them concussions. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times, good times. Good thing we have photographs. We don't remember any of your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> He's dying. He's just dying over here. He's, he's, his, his, his imagination is going off right now. He's like, ah. Oh. Yep, he's broken. <laughs> you ever see an episode of uh, Jackass where Bam just goes in and starts punching Phil in his bed? <laughs> yeah, That's yes. literally me to my dad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love oh, it. Man. Oh, shit. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> This episode has been 30 oh, minutes of talking and 10 minutes of laughing. <laughs> he is dying. <laughs> He's broken. I just remember Dad getting so pissed off. <laughs> He's Don't beat up on Uncle Fred. Uh, He's bro. laying about no shirt. He looks like an abominable snowman. I'm just punching him. <laughs> He's like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. I don't know how we got gifts. Like we were assholes. <laughs> uh, big assholes. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh man. Alright, I gotta gather myself here. <laughs> Woo! What are we oh. talking about again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Our good or how we're gonna deal with uh, uh, the holidays this year. <laughs> no. Um I don't Randy, have you talked on this yet? <sighs> um <laughs> kind of difficult yeah, me going. Going. <laughs> honestly yeah oh, um God. no i mean so really it, it's not going to be a whole lot different for me this year honestly because we like i said we spent most of the holidays with my brother and uh for the last couple of years since he moved it's really just been you know my parents and myself so things aren't going to be too much different we're not super close with a lot of the rest of our family so I mean, I don't think there's a big chance of us really going somewhere, especially under the circumstances. But, I mean, for my case, at least, I don't think it's going to be a lot different. Right. That's fair. Uh, is anyone doing anything at work for Christmas or anything like that? Like, um, for example. So, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, uh, yes, I was going to say, for example, um, my supervisor at Onogard actually just brought up the idea of doing um, it was Secret Santa, right? Yeah. Where you know everyone buys a gift, brings it in. Uh, he's keeping it to like a ten dollar limit, and then everyone chooses a gift and get to open it together. Yeah, as a work center, and I, I honestly we're all like a really tight knit group. So. Yankee swap. <laughs> the hell, brother? Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I like those. <laughs> yeah, so that that's what we're doing. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we we used to do that like in the in in our office. <laughs> yeah, we, we do it do all the like, time, every yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and the good thing our squadron does, we have a big ass Christmas party every year. But this year we're it's gonna be virtual, lame. Uh, virtual uh, Christmas round two, work party edition. What was all the fundraisers <laughs> for then? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so one one year we did uh we rented out the DoubleTree downtown Omaha and like top floor, and we did casino night. That was awesome. Ooh. Like we didn't bet money because we can't. So oh we yeah, won. yeah. But you you buy a raffle ticket and then like you start with a certain amount of chips, and you have to mm-hmm. get the more chips you get, the more raffle tickets you get to enter for like the booze wagon which if no one else knows i'll just explain it our squadron does this booze wagon raffle there's like a it's ton of games like tvs games every there's so much shit oh hell yeah brother. but there's a booze wagon it's like the coveted gift because we're all alcoholics but <laughs> it's legit like a yes. red wagon filled with booze like full bottles of everything the more expensive stuff you get the more raffle tickets you get mm-hmm. to, for a chance to win it Oh, so yeah, that I, thing is loaded up, dude. It's it. like a thousand dollars worth of alcohol. No oh, yeah, way. It's a shit ton. Oh yeah. yeah, it's a shit Damn. ton. Oh my god, um, dude. Yeah. So for example, one girl Mackenzie won it last year. Yeah, and she still has like eighteen bottles. <laughs> <laughs> that explains oh why god. your thing was so full. Yeah, she's like, well, yeah. I had to buy our liquor cabinet to keep it all in. Yeah, yeah. liquor cabinet looks good though. Yeah. That's fantastic. But, <laughs> yeah, no, that's like just you got to be creative. Like that's an awesome idea, and I think that's really important for. You know, just start your own traditions like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's how you can just keep happy this this year is like, 
I don't know, think of something virtual to do. Like that can be really fun. Get creative. Yeah, and even if it's not virtual, I mean, the idea of just giving back in general is nice. Like for instance, my work every Christmas and including this one, we do a food drive around this time. So that way we can, you know, get food to people who need it before the holidays. Uh, actually, we just the last week was our last week of it. So it's always nice to be able to give back to people who don't have as much too. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good point. We actually haven't talked about especially that. So this time of the year. Bit. Yeah. Volunteering. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer quite a bit this year because I didn't do it last year. Uh, I obviously wasn't here. Uh, but it makes you feel so good. And Christmas is about well the holidays, I guess, not just Christmas and whatever everyone else celebrates it's about giving back and like i get so much enjoyment out of that feeling that it's i i have to do it I'm going yeah. to this year definitely yeah. count your blessings yeah, yeah absolutely definitely around this time of the year do something like a food drive like honestly like handing like a giant like a huge turkey to like a like a family like like who have kids and everything like that and just giving it to them like honestly it feels amazing just like seeing like how happy they they get just from like turkey and like just like thanksgiving foods or like christmas foods and stuff like that it you know that you're making their entire year just by giving them that exactly yeah you yeah can... and i i think people are feeling that really a lot this year as well because we like our food drive this year we've gotten at least twice as much food as we've ever gotten in the past so That's awesome. i think wow. now more than ever yeah yeah mm-hmm. because you don't know who had a small local business and now obviously had to shut down because they can't survive so I bet a lot of people are struggling this year. Yeah, I was about to yeah, say that point. It's going to be important. Yeah. There there's so many ways you can give back. You can buy from small businesses this year. Like make it a point to do that, you know, instead of going online, going to Amazon and getting all your stuff, try to look out and branch out and look for smaller businesses and buy some of their products. You can Yeah, like Talon said, give a turkey to a family. You can invite someone into your family. You can in the past, you can, you know, volunteer at a cafeteria and feed homeless people, but Right now with COVID, that's a little harder. You can go out into the streets. You can hand out blankets to homeless people. You can just open doors and smile at someone. And there's so many. Just gonna rob to somebody's house and open their door. <laughs> <laughs> just, can I come in? Just, you see someone open park their driveway and run up to their house, open the door for them. Yeah, just smile, open it, smile, and just run away. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, yeah, but no, that's that's a good point, man. And the, you know, like that, you know, you're in the you're in line for Starbucks, and people buy your coffee in front of you. And you're like, well, I'll buy the next person's, and then it's just a yeah. chain reaction. I'm, yeah. who's the asshole well, that stops that? Is what I want to know, dude. For real, yeah. there's there, yeah, there's some some dude just like gets up there. It's like, oh, my coffee's free, awesome. Yeah, and they just well, drive away. It also depends yeah. on how many drinks the person behind you is ordering. How many drinks? If they're ordering like for their <laughs> office or something, they have like six drinks. Be like. Uh, I'm a pass. <laughs> yeah. Who cares, man? It's just it's the holiday spirit. Yeah, let's do it. I'm not trying to spend fifty dollars on your coffee though. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like wait, how much? <laughs> nah, never mind. Uh, never mind. <laughs> just away. I got mine free though. Thanks. <laughs> see you. <laughs> see you. See you. See you. But yeah, so that that is important. So I think the big takeaways from this episode are for sure to get out there and volunteer, give back a little bit, any way you can. There's so many ways you can do that. Just make somebody's day. I'm going to try and make someone's day like every day, all of December. Like I'm going to go out and do something special each day. And I think that's if we imagine if we all did that. Dude, like, dude, yeah. how good of a place would the country be? The world. The world. Like, yeah. Imagine like if, if like around like just any time throughout the year, like if someone just like gave back to their community, the world would just be a better place. Yeah, man. That'd be awesome. Talent and ed- uh, edit in in the background. What the world needs now do it put it in <laughs> i don't even know what that is yeah i don't know what that is either you just that ruined song? it we didn't have to edit anything out this episode and now we do oh. <laughs> you can leave it it'll be funny people know uh, what that song is don't be an idiot no it's just Oof. you boom rest <laughs> <laughs> dang i'm trying to back you right, up randy but i also don't know it <laughs> yeah. oh come on joe so yeah we create the world you know make it a better place and you know, just so it's important, just reach out to those who might be struggling a little bit. And if you know someone struggling, invite them into your home. Like we've talked about, we do that a lot. So just, you know, keep everyone in mind. Think of creative ways to have fun this year. And I think it'll be a blast. I think it might be the most fun Christmas yet because you don't know what you're going to do. And you can you can do whatever you want. It's 2020. There's no rules. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Booze wagon. Like, I don't know, man. It'll be fun. 
Twenty twenty is here with that. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. All right, guys. This has been Lessons Learned. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and go follow our other social media pages linked in the description. From all of us here at Lessons Learned, have a good day and see ya!